Welcome to worship today at Lakeview Lutheran Church. This is the Festival of Pentecost, and we're grateful that you are here celebrating it with us. And like usual, you're invited to share this video with others or point them towards YouTube, Vimeo, or the church Facebook page if they'd like to participate in the service. A couple of quick announcements. So I hope you're all wearing red today, because red reminds us that we are on fire with the Holy Spirit. So um, if you want to pause the video, go put on red and then come back. That's terrific. Um, and, and by the way, don't look at my hair. Uh, I'm going to be braiding it in ponytails eventually, so that's why um, I'm going to let it grow out as long as it's got such a good start. A couple of announcements. We are continuing to receive a porch light offering, a special offering for porch light to help them pay for food, which we did not provide during the month of May because of the coronavirus. But in lieu of that, we're going to send a financial gift. If you want to make one, write your check to Lakeview, send it here, drop it off, or go onto our website and give by check or credit card through the Vanco Gift Plus program. So we'll do that through June 1st. Um, there's a blood drive coming up in June, June 16th. It's from noon until 5 p.m. in East Hall here at Lakeview. Um, we'd really encourage those of you who are comfortable to uh, come and donate blood. But remember this, you must make your reservation in advance. They do not accept walk-ins during this time of the virus, so please make your reservations. And then make sure also that nobody comes with you because only the people donating blood um, can come into the building and they must wear a mask. Um, so check that out and thank you to everybody who will, will be donating blood. Um, we're not gonna rush into gathering in our worship space. We are preparing it. Um, chairs in this room have been removed, and so we're prepping things for when that time comes. We're going to move slowly. I would encourage you to take a look at a letter that I just posted on our Facebook page or sent to you via Realm email. It is a letter from our bishop, Bishop Peter Rognes, um, about being very cautious and slowly go into uh, reopening for in-person worship time um, and he certainly makes good sense and that's exactly how our church council has been viewing our return to the sanctuary so in the meantime you're going to continue to get these videos that terry graciously and wonderfully puts together and lynn plays on and today we thank bella um, for singing so with that we will silence everything that we can make sure we're dressed in red and prepare our hearts for worship during lynn's prelude
There are many varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are many varieties of services, but the same Lord. There are many varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them. Through the Spirit, one person receives the utterance of wisdom, and another receives knowledge. One person receives faith, and another receives, receives the gift of healing. To some, the Spirit has given the ability to work miracles. Some are able to prophesy, and some can speak in tongues. All of these unique gifts and many more are activated by one and the same Spirit. Just as your body has many members, we too, who are many, belong to the one body of Christ. In the Spirit, we have been baptized into that one community. We are Jews, Greeks, Norwegians, and Africans. We are slaves, free, adults, children, transgender, cisgender, and intersexed. We are straight, gay, married, and single. And all the members of this body are one in Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bella Newman will now sing, Come, Gracious Spirit. from the second chapter of Acts. Now this is the reading that the majority of our readers fear that they might get and have to read publicly here in the sanctuary. So thanks to COVID-19, none of you have to worry about that today. I will read this reading. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, be Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Now all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As I've already said a couple of times, it is indeed the festival of Pentecost, and, and red reminds us that we are on fire with the Holy Spirit. A festival, like the festival of Pentecost, is, as you know, a celebration. Pentecost joins Christmas and Easter to make up the three major festivals in the church year. Pentecost is also a Jewish festival. For the Jewish community, it's the celebration of the end of the spring harvest and the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. Now the thing that sets Pentecost apart from Christmas and Easter is how it is not recognized in the secular world. Society has not yet found a way to capitalize and earn revenue from the festival of Pentecost. Hallmark hasn't gotten a hold of it. There are no bunnies or chocolates or presents or Santa Clauses associated with it. There are no pe Pentecost sales ever. You can't even buy Pentecost wrapping paper. The airports have never been crowded for this holiday because people are traveling to be with family and friends on Pentecost. Hams and turkeys and prime ribs do not fly off the shelves at Hy-Vee. People don't sit around and watch sporting events on the afternoon of this festival and celebrate by drinking beer and eating spinach dip. What? No football? How can this really be a holiday? But it's a pretty good holiday. Perhaps it's more authentic than any other holiday that we celebrate. Today is the day that we celebrate the crowning achievement of the Jesus story. He was born, he arose, he rose from the grave, and now he gives us the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate that God gives us the Holy Spirit and begins the church on earth. Today we celebrate that God continues to be present among us through that Holy Spirit. And according to that story that I just read from Acts, the Spirit of God creates new life and new community among us. In that story, we see how individual differences are respected and affirmed. And we also see in that story 
that the spirit creates harmony and a common understanding while respecting those differences. Pentecost is the day to celebrate and to deliberately lift up the diversity and the distinctiveness of the people who make up the church. So remember, the church is not bricks and mortar. The church is people. So when we celebrate the church, we celebrate the people who are the church. And for me, the more diverse that those people are, the more authentic the church is. So I think back to the church of the 60s in my youth. I don't recall being very deliberate in uplifting diversity in the church overall. In my youth, diversity in the church meant that you were either male or female. Diversity meant that you were either of German descent or of Norwegian descent, or you were either single or married. Diversity meant that you either lived in town or you lived in the country. Everyone was white, everyone was straight, and everyone was supposed to be happy with the gender that they were assigned at birth. And the church did not, to the best of my knowledge and experience, the church did not talk about social issues that affected human beings like sexuality and gender and ethnic history or skin color. So when I look at the church today, a church that can respect and affirm people for who they really are, I am convinced that the Holy Spirit is alive and well and working within this place. I am convinced that God's Spirit is working and moving amongst us every single day. That Spirit is working through science and biology and technology. And today, the church can recognize that we are straight and gay and bisexual. We are able to look beyond a gender binary and see that not everyone falls into the traditional categories of male and female. And not only can we look at and consider all of that, but we can respect and affirm people who are outside of those gender tr binary traditions. Today, we are grateful that we can recognize that we come from a variety, a rainbow of skin tones. We come from all of the continents. When I look out over the people in this small congregation of Lakeview, I see folks who claim Korean descent, Nigerian descent, Mexican descent, Venezuelan descent, German descent, Haitian descent, Canadian descent, and yes, we even have some folks from Iowa who come here. We are made up of folks who have been adopted, those who have been born because of in vitro fertilization, and those who have been naturally born. We have folks who exist because of a surrogate carrier. We are farmers, teachers, homemakers, social workers, lawyers, police officers, government employees, bankers, bartenders, casino workers, carpenters, accountants, custodians, airline pilots, and retirees, and a whole lot more, but I don't have time to name everybody. We have people who worship with us periodically who are Jewish, and periodically we have people who worship with us who are Muslim. Not long ago, I did a funeral service jointly with a Wiccan priestess. We have welcomed into our midst people who dress in drag and people who have had gender change treatment and surgeries. And we come from all kinds of educational and economic backgrounds. And there have been many times in this building and even right here in this worship space where multiple languages have been spoken. And sometimes we have always figured out a way to be able to communicate. Just ask any of our food pantry volunteers. And then, when we come forward to the communion rail to receive the bread and wine, the remembrance of Christ present in our lives, that Holy Spirit is alive and moving among us all.
The Holy Spirit passes over all the usual entrance requirements and examinations and admission fees and accepts and forgives each of us. In other words, we all understand in our own languages and our own beings. For me, that all-inclusive acceptance and love is what the church is called to be. Whether our doors are locked or unlocked, we are still the church. So sometimes, I gotta tell you, I do feel drunk on the Holy Spirit. It's not always the beer, sometimes it's the Spirit. So Pentecost is indeed a great festival for me. It's a powerful and a moving event that clearly makes the unconditional love and acceptance of God known. May the Holy Spirit take you, each of you, out of your comfort zones and move you in unlikely paths of love every day. Amen. Oftentimes in this place, we talk about what our favorite hymns are and what hymns we don't like, and we're ready to share them frequently. So today, you get to sing and follow along with one of my favorite hymns. It is entitled, Open the Door, and the words will appear on your screen. Together we profess our faith using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Thank you for the gift of the Church and your Holy Spirit, who has kept the Church flourishing for thousands of years. May the Church respect and affirm all people as you respect and affirm all people. May the Church show your unconditional love through our words and our actions. We lift to you all who lead in the Church and in congregations, especially during this unusual time. Give all faith communities wisdom to safely return to our sanctuaries and gatherings so that we do not do so prematurely or while risking the health of others. Thank you for the gift of creation. Make each of us good stewards of the earth and its resources. Bring comfort and hope to locations across the globe where there has been difficult and destructive weather. We lift to you all people who are depressed and frustrated and struggling with health and finances during this pandemic. May your Holy Spirit spend some extra time with them right now. Help us to end our thoughts of racism. Continue to give our congregation the desire and the ability to operate our food pantry, blood drives, and to raise money for porch light. We pray for all people who are struggling with grief, including Steve and Christine Stevenson and their families. Bring a rich measure of healing to Janet, Art, Sandy, June, Georgia, and to all those whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. And together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we hear Bella sing, I am the vine.
Receive the blessing. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for you. The Spirit sustains you in God's love and leads you out to share the good news with others. May this Spirit bless you and keep you in God's grace today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The final hymn is All Are Welcome. The words will appear on your screen. <laughs>